happenstance. Happenstance. Eh? Have you got your books on feeding pipe? To, I'm preaching chapter 3, I think. It says. Yeah. Have you got how to pray book? Who doesn't have themselves? And they became a nation under a king called Ahab. Now, Ahab needed to go to battle and fight an enemy from a nation called Syria. And Jehoshaphat had come to visit his brother king Ahab, and Ahab asked him to go to battle with him. So the battle is they are about to go, and he tells Jehoshaphat, I am the king of Israel. The battle is actually, I <laughs> initiated the battle, but I will not go as the king. You go dressed as a king. And then I will disguise myself as one of the soldiers. And Jehoshaphat also agreed. I don't understand such a foolish idea. <laughs> you are going to call for a fight. And then you want me to go and present myself as the king who is coming. Okay? And then you will disguise yourself. So he also agreed and went. <laughs> now the king of Aram had ordered his 32 chariot commanders. Or the king of Syria had commanded his 32 captains. That they ha that had rule over his chariot, saying, Neither fight, neither with small nor great, save only with the king. So you can imagine the man who is coming to fight is saying, I need only one target. When you see a small man, don't fight him. Only the king must be fought with. I need his head. And he, that king, has also decided that I'm not going as the king, I'm going to disguise myself as a civilian. And you, my friend, be the king. And he also agreed. And the man has, in, has, has instructed his 32 captains to fight with only the one who is dressed as a king. So in the battlefield, they continue verse 32. He says, and it came to pass when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, who is dressed as the king, they started chasing him. <laughs> they said, surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him because they have been instructed to fight only with the king. And you too, you allowed yourself to dress as a king. <laughs> but when they approached him and he saw they are taking their swords and they were about to strike him, he was not a fool. The Bible said, and he cried out, I am not the one. <laughs> You would have died a foolish death. <laughs> because after killing him, they remove his helmet. They say, ah, it's not ah, Ahab. We made a mistake. We were not supposed to fight with anybody else. So when they, he cried out, they left him. Verse 33. And the Bible says, And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. And then, manager, continue. And a certain man, somebody say a certain man. A certain man. This is where the newspaper picked up their story. A certain man took his bow and arrow, and then he drew it at a venture. That word venture means at random. That means in a happenstantial way. Wow. At random. He didn't have an aim. He didn't know Ahab was around. He didn't know who, where it was, he was just shooting out, shum, it was a shum, shum. And then the Bible says, and he smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness, which means that the armor, he was wearing an armor. And, and the man struck the arrow that he was shooting randomly, eh? it went to hit him. At, at one of the joints, because when they wear a helmet, maybe between the neck and the breastplate, there will be a small space there. Or between the, the breastplate and the skirt, the metal or the coat of mail and the metal sheet, which will be his skirt, there may be a space here. And the Bible says that the arrow went into the joint. It's like the space between them. The, that's where it went. And the guy put, he didn't know that he had struck a target. It went to the king of Israel who had disguised himself. It went to him who was somewhere that nobody could locate. So the newspapers will say, King Ahab has died through a random shooting a stray bullet. Wow. So maybe something will happen in your life and it will be said that I don't know, I don't know what happened. Before I knew it, they say we should go home. They have lost my job. 
So it's almost like, ah, the man was happy with me. How did my landlord come and suddenly he's not happy that I should move? <laughs> I don't know why. I was with this brother. We we're friends. We went to Nando's. We were happy. The evening, we went to the cinema. We came home. I saw him off. Even I gave him a peck. Yes. <laughs> Nothing was wrong. We woke up in the morning. He has sent a text. It's over now. <laughs> so you see the, the, the banner headlines on the newspaper. Ahab dies through a chance arrow hitting him. But now let's go back to the beginning of the story. How this chance occurrence happens. And that is what happens to many people. When you read from verse 1, the Bible says that, from verse 1, he says, and, and they continued three years without war between Syria and, and, and Israel. And then, manager continued, and it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take not out the hand of the king of Israel, the Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said, I am as you, I, as you are, and your people are my people. Let's go and fight them. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king, Enquire, enquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. What he was saying is that, let us pray to God and find out his direction concerning this battle. Wow. wow. Yeah. So Jehoshaphat, he was spiritual. And many people are not spiritual. Wow. You are going into battle, you won't pray. He just thought to himself, this Syria is ours. And we are sitting down coolly and they are also enjoying. Let's go and take that land. And Jehoshaphat said, before we go, let us inquire from the Lord. Let's find out from the Lord. Let's find out from the Lord. Let's find out from the Lord. That must be your posture. Mm -hmm. It is worth knowing the mind of God concerning your life. Preach. It is worth praying to God to know where you go to university, to know who you would marry, mm -hmm. to know what job to take, what career you should pursue. It is worth it. Knowing what God has for your life. Oh. There's a power. It is the power of God. It is worth praying to God to say, Lord, I commit this into your hand. Yeah. Jehoshaphat said, let us pray. And they prayed. Wait, wait. The king of Israel brought the prophets together. 400 men. You see? And he asked them a question. Shall I go to Ramoth Gilead or should I forbear? Should I go and fight this battle or I shouldn't go? And all the 400 prophets, they prophesied and they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into your hand. Go up, all 400. One of them, even, he made a horn of iron and lifted it up. As they were prophesying, he went behind. Then he went to find iron shaped in the form of a horn and lifted it up and said with this one you will push back syria <laughs> king of israel you will kill syria you will overtake it it will be yours this is our your horn the lord says that you win hey. you see but jehoshaphat was sitting there as they were talking and he asked the question is there no other prophet to say something different <laughs> everybody can say the same thing at the same time like that Then the king of Israel said, no, there's one man. He never says anything good about me. He's a prophet. But any time he comes to prophesy, his name is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And he says, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. For some of you, when you see a pastor who preaches that, it always pricks you. You don't like it. You want somebody to say what you want to hear. Ah, when you come to a church, where they are opening the Bible, and they are telling you to pray yourself, you want a church where they will say, come and let me pray for you. Oh. It's like you don't want, you want to hear what you want to hear. You want to marry somebody, he's not born again. He doesn't know God. He said he's an unbeliever. He said he's, he's an orangutan. Hey. 
and when you come to a, a pastor or a brother who says, have you prayed about it? So yeah. All oh, the question say is a good idea. <laughs> then somebody is there no other brother here to say something and say, ah, there's another brother. Any time I present something and like you say uh, it is not a good idea. I, I hate him. <laughs> Don't like people who tell you the truth. Mm. <laughs> yeah. In a relationship, you really want it. Anybody who counsels you differently. You will be against the person. <laughs> so they brought Makaya. No, they went to they went for him. And 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 Makaya, <laughs> when the guy went, the messenger, he said, Look, everybody is prophesying that a man should go to battle. Don't go and say something different. You are too known. <laughs> Always wanting to say something, be the odd one out. Mm -hmm. I'm telling in advance, all of them say you should go. He really wants to go. So when you go, don't go and make yourself like some odd person who is going to say something. You are if you are the only spiritual person. <laughs> then Makaya said, whatever the Lord says, I will say it. Yeah. And pastors must preach whatever the Lord says. They must okay. preach. Believers must declare what the Lord says they must declare. We live in a world where the world is not dictating to the church what we must preach. The world is dictating to the church how we must behave. Yeah. yeah. The world is trying to now dictate to a church how it must be run. Whatever the law says, we must follow it. So Makaya came. When he came, he said, O oh, king, go to battle, you are going to win. Nobody can meet, beat you. You'll be victorious. Go, O oh king. Go, O oh king. And the king said, How long have I told you that you should tell me the truth and nothing but the truth? Manager, continue reading. I'm, I'm, I'm reading. And follow me. Follow my reading. <laughs> we are past here a long time. <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah. Yeah. So, the king said, tell me the truth. Then, Makaya, in verse <coughs> number 14, I pray, we've not passed here a long time. This person is very slow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. He said, listen, 17, verse 17. He says, I did see all Israel. Eh? Is that it? <laughs> as sheep that have no scattered upon the hills, as sheep that are scattered without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master, let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king said, Look, you see, have you seen what he said? <laughs> all Israel are scattered as sheep without a shepherd. I told you that the guy, when he speaks, he will not say anything good about it. Because he said, I saw Israel, they were scattered as sheep having no shepherd. If they don't have a shepherd, what does it mean? I mean they don't have a king. What does it mean? It means the king is dead. And what does it mean? It means he has lost the battle. That means he has gone to die there. <laughs> wow. I did see all Israel scattered as sheep upon the hills, like sheep having no shepherd. And the king said, have you seen the guy? I told you he doesn't say anything good about him. <laughs> now the man came and said, go to battle. He said, he's not saying the truth. Now he's saying that the people to the, the shepherd has been killed. He said that he likes to say the wrong thing. Then he continued. I like Micaiah. I said, I like Micaiah. He said, and he continued. He says, and, and, and. Oh, man, it, <laughs> Let me just find my own scriptures and read it. <laughs> Let me just read it. Yeah. He says, hear therefore the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now he's now giving him details of what the Lord had said. He said, now hear the word of the Lord. And what did the Lord say? He says, and the Lord was sitting on his throne. <laughs> I thought he was following now. He's lost me again. Verse 18. He says, and verse 19. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left hand. 
And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go to Ramoth Gilead? And what? And, and what? And fall. What does fall at Ramoth Gilead mean? That means he will go to the battlefield and die there. So you may have thought that this arrow came by chance, but a meeting had been organized to determine the end of Ahab's life. So the guy is doing the thing by chance and the arrow hits Ahab. But the beginning of the arrow that was thrown, it comes from the mouth of the Lord that Ahab must fall here. He can disguise himself but he will fall. Wow. He can hide himself but once he has arrived at Ramon Gilead, the end is come. And one said after this manner, and another spoke after this manner, because they were having a meeting. God tabled the motion. Who will go and entice him, deceive him, so that when he goes, he will go and die there. And, and they were discussing, so I would say, do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. But verse 21 says, but a spirit, an evil spirit came up and said, I will go, and I will entice him, and I will persuade him. And I will cause him to go to Ramadilla. And God asked him, how are you going to do that? And he said, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Hey. I'll be a lying spirit. So all the 400 people wow. eh, are going to say, he should go. He should go. He should go. You can go to the battle. You can go to the battle. Hey, you go to the battle. You can win the battle. They were singing it, they were rapping it. You gotta go to the battle. Somebody also lifted the horn. Eh, eh, you can, you can, you will, you will push Syria behind. You will push Syria, push it, push it, hey, push it, push it. With this horn, you push it. With this horn, you push it. With this horn, you push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. Push it, push it, push it. Hey! You are making a horn. Not knowing that there's a lying spirit in your mouth. You can make, is it, that's why some of you, eh? God will give you a prophet who will bath you. Because when we preach the simple message of the word of God, that this is what the Lord says, you don't like it. You want somebody who can make a horn of iron and say that with this you will overcome in your marriage. With this you will succeed in your education. Come and receive a holy bath. Wow. Bath you and oil you from the head, the, the head of the crown of your head to the source of your head. And the Lord said, Go and persuade him and he will go. Then Micaiah said, Now therefore, the Lord has put the lying spirit in all your prophets, in the mouth of them. So everything they are seeing is not the truth. And the guy who made the iron, he's called Zedekiah. He slapped Micaiah. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> then he asked the question Which way went the spirit of God? from me to speak to you. Since when did the Holy Spirit leave you? Do not come and talk to you. Since when? Look at me, I'm still on the floor. Which way? Since when? Did the Spirit of God leave me to ever come and speak to you? And Makar gave him an answer. He said, the day you enter into the inner chamber, to hide yourself, which means to pray to God. That's the day you will know. Yeah. You don't pray. You are making a horn of iron. You won't pray. You are shining your lips. <laughs> you won't pray, but you have gone to the hairdressers and they are extending your hair by more than six feet. <laughs> You won't pray. You are going to the battle and you are disguising yourself. You are using dresses to outwit the enemy. But when God has
can determine there's a determination on your life yeah there's a determinant there's something that has determined that you are not going to survive if you ever step on Ramon Gilead you are not returning home and then he you see and Makar said thou shall see in the day you enter into a chamber then the next verse says and the king of Israel said take Makaya and put him in prison till I return in peace <laughs> said Makaya said if you return from the battle in peace then the Lord has not spoken by me wow. Wow. so when you pray you get a bit certain about something yes. when you haven't prayed you are just using strong voice <laughs> yeah you are using nice sounding English words yeah with slangs you know You, you go to the battle in it. Yeah. You are going to the battle in it. Who sit down and be in it, in it, the battle? You will be surprised what will happen to you. You are using emotions. I don't understand this church. As for this church, whenever you come here and then you have plans, you are going to rehearse. You want to sing. When you come, they say there's no time for you to sing. And then every day, every day you do that. Well, but then why do you like to sing? You didn't dress properly for this occasion. And then they say I am dressed and I can't sing the song. So why do they like me dress? If they don't like me sing. Why do they like me? Hey! You won't pray. You are using emotional blackmail. To overpower us, actually, witchcraft, domineering witchcraft spirit, to overcome us. And then you make your faces like you sit at the back. And the pastor will be looking at you and feeling bad. And he has to do something to appease you. When he should he appease you? You are dressing. You say you are going, you will disguise even to, to let Makaya's word not even come to pass. I won't go as a I won't go as a normal person. Mm. Oh, you go as a normal person. <laughs> but the Lord has had a meeting. Ah. A, there has been a meeting. And look, there are many meetings that are going on in this life. There are boys in the system. They have a meeting they have held with their friends. Mm -hmm. Any girl I meet within 24 hours, I'll sleep with her. Yeah. It's a challenge. So as you are meeting the guy and saying he's very nice, he's very gentle, he's very kind, he's so... You've never met a brother who is so kind and so nice, he actually even saw you off to, to, to the train station, paid your fare, everything, and took you home. Hey! He has a 48 hour agenda on your head. <laughs> and that was 24 hours. The next 24 hours is the execution time. You won't pray. Not knowing that somebody is having a meeting on you. And this time evil spirits, they came together. Job was in his house. God was having a meeting. God was having a meeting. And the devil went there. Do so you think the devil doesn't go for meeting? When we come here, he doesn't go. We speak in tongues, he can't come here. Even God himself had the service, the devil was there. <laughs> he can be here, cry. Yes. Sitting somewhere. <laughs> Even God was the chairman of the meeting. The devil came and God asked me a question, where are you from? He said, I'm moving around the world. I'm a free man. Since you have not bound me to put me in the in chains, I'm, I'm a free man. I move everywhere. Then God asked him, have you considered Job? He said, Job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been monitoring him. <laughs> but anytime we get there, we realize that you have put a big hedge around him, we can't enter. But if you take off that hedge and we'll fire him, you will see that he will catch you. And God said, Wow, that guy is not going to change his mind even if you take away some of his things. Don't kill him, take away whatever you want to take, but never kill him. He went. Job is dead. The, the newspaper reporters come to us and say, Job, do you know your children have all been killed? 
and uh, your houses have been destroyed and all your businesses. What what problem have you caused? Have you gone to touch any ancient deities somewhere? <laughs> or have you violated God's covenant for him to be punishing you like this? Is it because when you see something that has occurred, it looks like a hat. It's like a, it was not an arranged something. Because how can you be the rich man? He was the richest man in the Far East. And the Bible says that in one day, all his children died. In one day, all his houses were burned down. In one day, all his cattle were slaughtered. In one day, thieves and robbers chanced upon his what merchants and collected everything. And only one or two servants were left to report the matter. So when you look at it, it looks like, oh, this thing, what an unfortunate happens, happens, happens. <laughs> and a, a, a chance happening that has brought such devastation to the man's life. No, 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 but there was a meeting. There's been a meeting. A meeting that on Job's life. And in that meeting, God was boasting about Job. But God was sure about Job that he's a man of prayer. He's a man who fears God. He's a man who has choose evil. And he knows that he will not change his mind. There was a meeting. And there are meetings going on. Some of the meetings are in the heavens. Some are in people's homes. About you. Yeah. Some of the meetings are from relatives. Some of the meetings are from your workplace. Your bosses are meeting. As we are in the church, they are meeting. Somebody is meeting and they are determining things over your life. And you will be there, you won't pray. Just shining your lips. You won't pray. Getting parts to extend your hips so that you look shapely. Pack up your hips so that you look more healthy. You have taken newspapers and folded your breast so that they look pointed. And Job was a man of prayer. He didn't change his mind. So at the point, God told you that he should pray for it. The people who were with Job were criticizing God. Said Job should pray for them. And the Bible says, and Job prayed for his friend. He was a man of prayer. He didn't have to pray. You don't pray. Because you are in, in, in England. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the UK. You are in the UK. You don't pray. You go to work. Here yeah, it's not like that. We work. You are here. You maybe where you are coming from in Ghana and so on, you don't work the way we work here. It's about over here. You work. You won't wake up early to pray. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You watch, because you have a satellite television, you watch every channel, about 785 channels. <laughs> flipping through, flipping through, even to channels, you shouldn't even, you have no peace. Yeah. You won't pray, you are watching people having sex. Hey. They say, oh, actually, um, you know, my work, because of my work, I've not been having time to pray. But you having time to watch pornography. <laughs> Don't say me and, and, and bow your head. Lift up your head. I'm talking to you directly. I think you're talking to speak to you. But it is call you to pray.
knees in your house and put them down and place your knees on them and put your, your chest on the bed and, and put some, some message that is playing on the side and pray to God. Father, I commit my job into your hands. Father, my education. Father, I'm looking for a wife, but I'm not going to choose now. I've seen beautiful ones in the church. I've seen voluptuous ones in the church. I've seen scintillating ones in the church. I've seen fair ones in the church. I've seen slim ones in the church. Ones with big, 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 big bottles in the chest. I don't want to go to Ramogilia and die there. I have to pray. Yes, I have to pray. I have to, I have to, I have to pray to God. I have to tell God, Lord, I have never been this way before. I don't want to enter marriage and come out. I've seen people go and come, go and come. They enter, they escape. I don't want to have a relationship and be blowing, 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 blowing. Lord, I want to preserve the virginity you have given me. The entire virginity to the same virginity. I want to preserve it. I pray. You won't pray. You feel that you are educated. And then you ask, you are well. Okay, because you are well. You won't pray. Pray! Because events like what happened to our brother, they occur in this world more. When you are a man of prayer, and even it comes, you will be at peace. When I prayed and I got to a point, I had peace in my heart that even if my pastor doesn't survive, it is well. Mm -hmm. I told the wife, I said, God will take care of you. Oh, amen. I should wash my tears. Thank you. <laughs> you won't pray. You are bringing me. Uh, <laughs> But you have to pray. When you don't pray, you see that everything looks like chance for you. But what you think is chance, I'm telling you today that there are no chances in this world. You will to you is chance because you don't know the other side of the story. That's why it's chance. Oh, you think this brother, he died by chance. He didn't die by chance. Yeah. It's an arrangement. They decided he should go before he beat somebody who died in the process. Who pray? You are now reading magazines of men who have, whose orientation is a bit confused and how they have now been able to stabilize their thinking and now they have accepted how they are and then they move in the system. You won't pray. You are buying your children Nintendo. PlayStation. Xbox. You are placing iPad in their hands. But you are putting in their hand a window into the well of evil and evil. That's why we are saying and declaring that it is the season for prayer. Yes. Revive your prayer life. I say revive your prayer life. Yes. Don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. Your life depends on it. Your sanity depends on it. The straightness of your path along this world, it depends on your prayer. If only Ahab and all his prophets had gone to the inner chamber, he would never have gone to Ramotili at that time. God would have told him that it's the bad idea. If you go to this battle, you won't come. Just stay. <coughs> David often inquired of the Lord. He said, Lord, 
should I pursue? The people have come for my goods. The logical, the logic, the logical thing is to run after them and collect my thing back. Should I? See, sometimes logic is good. I will always follow logic. Mm -hmm. But when you are not a woman or a man of prayer, you like to follow logic. Actually, the, the, this thing is in the, we are all in the same church. We are all in the same way. And actually, I mean, even pastor likes it. He has the macanet. He has all the books on his iPad. It's the logical conclusion. So therefore, say yes and go. Don't think about it. <laughs> but the woman of prayer will say, Lord, this is the logic. Is it a good idea? Should I go to Ramot Gilead? And the Lord will say, no, don't go. David went to help a city called Kela and Saul had been chasing him so he went and he saved them from the Philistines he asked God should I go and fight for them God said go and fight and they fought and he rescued Kela so they liked David he had done them good when Saul heard that he was in Kela he ran he chased him with his soldiers when David heard that Saul was coming he waited on God again. He prayed again and he asked God, God, should I stay here? Or should I run away from my life? Because I've helped the people of Kila. They like me. They want me around. But will they hand me over to Saul? Even though I've rescued them from the Philistines, will they hand me over? Then the Lord said to him, they will, de they will deliver you to Saul. Wow. You have helped them, but they will deliver you to Saul. So run away. He didn't do it. Wow. If it was you, you say the logical thing is that ah, the left hand bats the right hand. So once I have bat this left hand, Kayla, they will bow me. I don't have to pray about it. They are very good. And God is saying, pray. Pray. You tell me, pray. You will never know how it is. The calamity will befall you that you can handle. Because sometimes some things can happen to you and you can handle them. Some things can happen to you and you, you don't you can't even be comforted. Even though God was trying to warn you about it. Never pray. Just do your hair. Father, help us. Bless your people. Have mercy on us. Make us men and women of prayer. Turn our hearts around, Lord. For many times our hearts have become too heavy. And running into your presence is not the first thing we think about. But here we are today. Have mercy upon us. Right now, revive prayer in this church. Amen. Revive prayer amongst your people. Amen. May your house be called a house of prayer. Amen. And not a house of meeting husbands and wives. Amen. Not a house of meeting business partners and people who can help us to get a job. Amen. Not a house where we can meet friends. It's not a rendezvous for social outing. Father, but may it be a place where we lift our hands to pray. Amen. Many of us don't even want the prayer. So we can't even come early, Lord. When it is time for prayer, we feel that the service has not begun. But Lord, call us now into the day and the hour and the season of prayer. Oh, my Father. Help your people. Stand to your feet, everybody, wherever you are. Open your mouth right now. Talk to God.